Welcome back to another episode of Barbecue and Bottles, folks. And today we're gonna to be doing an experiment here with this pork butt. Now, we usually just do pork butts, whether it's on the pellet grill or on the Weber kettle, but we're gonna do this one out here on the Kamado. And the reason we're doing it on the Kamado right now is it's the middle of winter, and so it's really cold out. And secondly, we're gonna do this overnight. So with the Kamado, we're gonna be able to load up that charcoal basket, just leave it out there overnight. We're not gonna do anything fancy like the spritzing or any of those extra treatments. And we're gonna see how this turns out. You know, it, this is gonna be a dead simple, quick prep, get it onto the Kamado, let it go for 12, 14 hours, and just see how it turns out. And I wanna see if all those extra steps and the extra effort of wrapping in butcher's paper or foil or spritzing, you name it, if whether those extra steps are actually worth it or not. So we're doing the lazy man's pork shoulder. So if you wanna see how this experiment goes, just stick with us. So to start, we've got a pork butt here. We picked it up at the local butcher and we still have the bone in as you'd expect. And on this side, we've got the bone coming out this side as well. Now, we've got a fat cap on the top, the skin's already off, but what we're gonna wanna do here is just score this fat cap, and this is really gonna help just the seasoning really absorb into the fat of the pork butt and just get down in there and contribute to the layer of flavor that we're trying to to make. So we, we just go with cross hatches here, then you turn your pork shoulder 90 degrees, and now we're gonna cut so that we get in perfect diamond or square shapes across the top. Now you don't wanna be cutting in deep enough that you actually get into the meat. You just wanna be slicing as thick as that fat cap is. Now with this fat cap, we're leaving this on and that's just gonna render down, it should render down over the cook and just provide a little bit more moisture and flavor profile to the, the end result on this pork butt here. So now what we're gonna do is get our rub. We've got a video link here in the, the comments down below to this rub, it's just our homemade rub. Main ingredients are salt, pepper, We've got a little bit of paprika for color, some garlic, but we've got all the links or all the measurements uh, in that recipe video. So you can make this yourself at home. We put it in big mason jars like this, so it's good for multiple cooks. So we just season the fat cap. You wanna get the sides, and this is a really thick cut, so you don't have to worry about over seasoning. It's gonna be almost impossible to over season this kind of cut going in wanting lots of flavor. Perfect. Now that we've got this seasoned up, we're gonna go fire up the Kamado and get that up to temp. That's probably gonna take us 20 to 30 minutes, and that's exactly the right amount of time here because we need this rub to just absorb into the pork shoulder and sweat it out, and that's gonna take 20 to 30 minutes as well. So we'll just leave this here while we go fire up the Kamado. So we've got the firebox full of charcoal. We're just gonna light this up. Perfect. Now we just use one of these butane torches for igniting, and as you saw, we just fire this up in probably four or five different spots in the charcoal there. And we'll just leave the lid open here for a couple minutes, let this really get firmly ignited, and then we're gonna close the lid down, and we're gonna be shooting for 225 as our low and slow cooking temp overnight. So you can see we've got the top vent just positioned a little bit past that first quarter mark here. And if we want to go above 225, we can move it out this way. If we want to 
constrain the grill or the airflow through the grill and, and lower the temp, then we'll move it this way. But for 225, I usually find this position just a little bit inside that first quarter mark is the right spot for us. And then for the bottom vent, we've got that open maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch. And again, that's really where we find this is perfectly positioned to get to that 225 to 250 range. Now for the setup for this cook, we're gonna get the slow roller placed in here. And this is a new system that the Kamado Joe came out that really just helps to regulate the smoke and the temperature within the dome to keep it a little bit more even. Then we're gonna put in the divide and conquer system. Now we've gone in here with a tray that's just full of water and that's gonna provide the humidity and the moisture that we're looking for for our cook overnight. And then we're using the top grates on the divide and conquer here. And this is where we're gonna put our pork butt on when we get it ready. So now that we've got this system all set up, we're just gonna close the lid down and wait till we get up to temp. So now we're gonna transfer the pork butt over. And you know what? We're actually, we wanna get the fat side up and that's just gonna allow this to render down into the pork butt. We're going indirect here, so we don't need to worry about having the fat side down in order to protect this from any heat source. So the heat's already being displaced with the slow roller. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do, just find the bones on this pork butt again. Perfect. And we're gonna insert this. Now what we want to do is just insert this temp probe into the thickest part of the pork butt here, but we want to make sure we don't actually hit the bone because that can impact the temperature reading. So we've got one bone here, the other bone coming out the other side, and we've got this in the thickest part. So now we're set. We're just going to close down the lid. We're just going to let this go for the full 12 hour cook. All right, it's the morning. Before we go check on the pork butt, we need to get some coffee. We put this on last night around 11.30. We then sat with it for about another hour just to make sure our temp was really nailed down before going to sleep for the night. So it's about eight in the morning here now and you'll see we're just a touch over 220 and this has really held temperature almost all night long here. And to show you, you know, one of the things we want to test on this Kamado is just how accurate this temp gauge is here. So we've got one temp probe in that's at great level. And you'll see here, let's see if we can get the read invisible to you, 224. So it almost lines up exactly with where this dial is. So we've, you know, through testing this and comparing over cooks, we've really got a lot of faith here in this uh, temp reading here on the dome now let's see what our before we open up the lid we've got an internal temp on our pork butt of 108 and we've, so we've got a good cook that's happened overnight um, but we still got a ways to go we're shooting for an internal temp somewhere around uh, 198 to 203 so now let's crack the lid and see how we're going Just look at that. So we don't have a bark forming yet, but um, you can start to see that some of this fat's rendering the cross hatchings that we had made are splitting and opening up. We still have enough water in our pan down below. So we're just gonna close the lid back down here and we're gonna let this go until we hit an internal temp of about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, we're 18 hours into this cook. We've just hit an internal temp of 196. This has really been the lazy man's pork butt. We just put this on. We've been checking the temp maybe once every two or three hours, but we haven't really had to adjust everything. Our vents have been right on point. 
So let's get this off and inside. This just smells absolutely incredible. Oh, you can tell when you pick it up, this is super tender. Just look at that. You can see the steam coming off it out here. So let's get it inside for a better look. So my nephew is gonna join us here and give you the honest review of this pork butt. We've got it inside. Normally we put this in a cooler for about 90 minutes just to allow the juices to redistribute, but it's dinner time and this is the lazy man's pork butt. So we're just gonna skip that step. And Cam here, again, he's gonna give us the true taste test. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna take off this layer of fat on the top here. And pork butt has enough fat spread throughout the intermuscular tissue that we don't really need this. And normally, we'd use a set of forks to break this apart, but look at this. This is just coming clean off the bone. Super tender, super moist, incredibly juicy. And I think we're gonna be able to break this apart just using our hands. Of course, we've got the heat resistant gloves. So this is crazy hot right now. All right, we brought in my nephew here to be the independent judge for the taste test. So we've got this pork all shredded. We're gonna give him a little piece to test. I'm gonna take a little piece to test. So what do you think, Cam? How would you rate this pulled pork? Is it good? Is it bad? Middle of the road? 10 out of 9. What? 10 out of 9. It's 10 out of 9. So better than a perfect score. You hear, heard it here first. You can do the Lazy Man's Pork Butt and get a 10 out of 9 and score. Perfection. This is really good, super easy, low maintenance. You got an awesome bark, a good smoke ring, incredibly moist, just fall off the bone tender. So if you like this video, give it a like below consider subscribing. And my nephew is looking to start a YouTube channel. So if you have any ideas on what channel he should start, leave it in the comments below because you'll see Cam on the YouTube screen to come. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.